and I describe what we do with COVID Graph. So uh, my name is Martin Preusser. I'm a computational biologist. Um, and with my company, I essentially do Neo4j consulting uh, for pharmaceutical industry and medical research. So it's uh, partly industry and, and partly public projects with universities, research institutes, all that kind of stuff. And uh, three weeks ago, um, I started loading, loading some data sets into Neo4j because that's essentially what I do. And uh, I started with uh, these, these famous uh, case statistics and case data from Johns Hopkins University and just played with it essentially. And uh, then more and more data sets came up and uh, more and more collaborators came on board. And uh, we built a real community um, around a knowledge graph on COVID-19. And I give you a quick tour of the project and the data. Um, so you find everything on covidgraph.org. Um, uh, also, uh, current, current developments and news, etc. You find all that here. Um, we are a very diverse uh, team, um, both from academia uh, and from companies. So we kind of have well at least half of the uh, European Neo4j community here. Uh, we have Prodina, we have Structure, uh, we have Linkurios, we have Graphware, Graphilium, etc. So it's a very diverse team, which is, in my opinion, very interesting because. Um, Doing, doing something like um, a knowledge graph on, on this disease in, in a purely academic uh, or purely university setting would be very difficult. What we do is, uh, is in, in many cases, considered as some sort of infrastructure. We build a tool that is supposed to help scientists do their job. And that is something uh, for, for what you don't get, uh, don't get funding through the traditional uh, research funding agencies. So that's why this is really interesting, I think. And um, we, have, uh, we do have the, the contact to scientists. Um, we have uh, very good data scientists and we have all the software developers around Neo4j. So we actually have the capabilities to build a, a useful tool. And uh, this is something that, we, that I think sets us apart from all the other um, data projects that you find on the internet. Um, most of them are essentially marketing for fancy AI tools. We want to build something that actually helps researchers do their job. And uh, we're not quite there yet, but what we managed to achieve in, uh, in two or three weeks is really impressing, I think. Uh, impressive, I think. And uh, we are on track uh, to build more use cases, to collaborate with the real world researchers, um, and to build actually, actually useful applications on top of our knowledge graph. And this is who we are. And uh, everything we do is, uh, of course, available. So you can, uh, uh, you, you find everything on covergraph.org. So the Neo4j database is public. Um, we have a, um, a very active community. Um, we use uh, Matrix. It's sort of a free and federated Slack. And everyone is, uh, of course, invited to join our chat. Um, you find all that also on the website, uh, covergraph.org. Uh, there's something like get in touch. So we can have a quick look at the data sets we're working with. Voila. This is here. Um, as I said, and this is what you see in, in the bottom left, we started with these case statistics. Uh, first thing we added was uh, world population data um, to sort of put it in, in perspective, like something like percentage of, of uh, infected in, in the population, et cetera. Um, the first, uh, broader, so to say, data set we used was the COD19 publication data set. Um, it was published as part of the Kaggle challenge. It's 50K um, scientific publications uh, curated uh, that are relevant for uh, the coronavirus and the COVID-19 disease. Um, second text-based data set we added was um, uh, a patent data set uh, from an organization called Lens.org. Um, they also created uh, patents that are relevant for the virus. Um, we then started to add more biology to the whole, um, uh, whole database. Um, everything from uh, basic biomedical data, data sources, genome databases, etc., gene annotations. And the fourth uh, building block currently here in the down right is experimental data. And uh, all this is public, all this is around, but obviously all this is separated in different databases from different data providers. And our goal, of course, is to connect everything um, because this is what you need to answer real world medical or bio biological questions. Because, I mean, the problem in the end is um, we have a solid understanding of how viruses work, but no one can, can really comprehensively answer why um, this virus 
uh, leads to so many side effects, to so many severe cases. And this is something that we have to understand mechanistically. We have to understand how this disease works on a, on a mechanistic biological level um, to actually develop drugs. Um, because a vaccine um, might work, might not work, um, but it will take some time. Uh, and if you look at influenza, for example, the influenza vaccines, but you need, need a new one every year. And you never know how well it actually works. And as of yet, we don't know if the coronavirus is going to come back in a slightly changed or mutated way. So understanding diseases on a, on a mechanistic level is always the, the, the basis um, for any kind of drug development. Um, here's a quick overview of the uh, actual data set. So this is a screenshot from the Neo4j browser. Um, on the top left in yellow, you see the publications. We have papers, uh, papers have a full text. Here in blue, you see patterns. Uh, again, they are subdivided in, uh, in, in the title, in the abstract, etc. Um, here on the right is uh, biology. So we have all the information we have on genes, proteins, uh, etc. Um, we have annotation for these data sets, something like gene ontology terms. If some bioinformaticians are here, you will know that it's categories and groups of biological functions. In uh, a lighter blue, we have exper experimental data from a, a really huge uh, database, we can say that certain genes are active um, under certain circumstances and in certain tissues. And what you can do with this is answer questions like, um, uh, in these 50,000 uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus relevant publications, you find th uh, certain genes. Are these genes actually relevant in, in lung, uh, in human lung, for example? These kind of, uh, kind of path-like queries on this data set would be very, very difficult to answer if some poor PhD student uh, had to read all the papers and open gene databases and genome databases and look for all that manually, very difficult. Um, this is an, an overview of the data set. Um, you already see some nice graph, uh, graph uh, things you can do here because one of the first uh, sort, of, sort of graph manipulations we did was to split up the full text data sources into individual sentences, which are called a fragment, uh, usually a sentence, everything is split up. And uh, we now have people working on uh, NLP uh, related tasks uh, like named entity recognition so that we can create more connections between uh, the word of biology and these text data sources. This is uh, sort of the first goal. Um, and a lot more data sources are on, on their way. Um, one of the next elements will be clinical trials, uh, which are sort of a combination of structured data. So you ob obviously in the clinical trial, you test the drug, you see if it's efficient, um, but you also collect uh, a lot of text essentially because uh, doctors write down the observations. It's always also a part of the whole thing. And more connections, NLP-like connections between the structured world of biology and the unstructured world of text, uh, this is what we are currently working on. Um, even, even uh, so the, the next couple of slides are examples, data examples, even very, very simple things um, are, can, can be incredibly useful if you model them on a graph. Um, genes have names. Uh, here's my favorite gene, it's called FOXA2. Uh, unfortunately, some people call the gene FOXA2, uh, other people call the gene, uh, for some reason, TCF3B. Uh, other call it, uh, others call it HNF3B. So genes have synonym names. Um, this is essentially his, historic uh, developments. Of the way. I mean, uh, the oldest genes have been named maybe 100 years ago or so, and, but this is how it is. And just including something like uh, these uh, synonym mappings in a graph. Um, you, you see that here, right? Uh, this is uh, the name of the gene and you have these synonym steps. Just including this is incredibly useful. Because if you um, read a publication and it talks about TCF3B and you don't know that uh, this is the same gene uh, that other people call FOXA2, uh, then you don't see this connection. Just this very, very small graph-like step can be incredibly uh, important and useful. Um, then again, if you go the next step from, uh, from the biology here, from genes and connect it to uh, text data sources. Um, very simple queries, for example, like, um, uh, give me give me the genes that have most mentions uh, in my curated text corpus. This can be very very interesting because you find find new ideas. In the end, um, this knowledge graph and this database uh, it does not solve any kind of problem. 
Um, it's, a, it's a tool that researchers can use to generate ideas, generate hy hypotheses, etc. This is what you want to use it for. Um, and we already took the next step and uh, went from this uh, text data through basic biology down to real experimental data. So uh, you find a, um, find a claim in a paper, a certain gene is mentioned in the created COVID-19 paper data set. Okay, but is this gene actually uh, expressed, which means is it actually um, active in, in the tissue I'm interested in? This kind of question would be very, very tedious uh, if you would do it manually. And well, like I tried to mention in the beginning, um, we don't just want to build a cool data set. Uh, everyone else does that. And uh, it's, it's, it's nice, it's a nice exercise, so to say, but it doesn't solve any kind of problem. And what we want to do is we want to build applications on top of this knowledge graph. And we already started, so we have a visual graph explorer um, that was built uh, on request by researchers by uh, Yworks, you see it down here. Uh, here you can, can do more specific searches. So you can, <clears throat> you can search for a gene and uh, you can specifically ask for neighboring genes and for publications that uh, mention one or two or multiple genes. So this sort of uh, co-mentions co or co-citations um, are very important. Um, we have support from Licurius and uh, they, uh, they uh, donated a Licurius Enterprise license and with that, we're working with researchers because they can well, explore the graph themselves, which can be incredibly useful. And uh, Graphilion is uh, already building the first uh, more tabular or dashboard-like um, uh, interfaces. And all of this we try to do on, on request with real-world use cases, which is, uh, I think, um, yeah, super important. Okay, uh, that was a quick uh, run, run through of the uh, COVID graph. And um, I think it would make sense to just continue with questions, if there are any questions. So are there any questions for Martin? Uh, please feel free to pop them in the public chat. So uh, are you able to stay with us for the meetup, Martin? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, and cool. uh, yeah, one, one last thing maybe. Um, so we are an open community. Um, Go to covetgraph.org, uh, get in touch, uh, join our chat. Uh, we need any kind of help, essentially. So if you work with Neo4j, um, uh, if you have a background in computational biology, if you want to do data loading, if you have ideas on uh, visualization, interfaces, uh, everything. So um, we have a very, very good uh, project management. and We reached a very good project management and documentation level in short time. Uh, there are open issues on GitHub um that uh, that you can look at uh so that's github.com slash covet graph um so it would be fantastic if uh, if you join and help 